You're watching Half First Live, I'm Caroline Modaresi Tarani. Entrepreneur, investor, and Shark Tank's most tell it like it is star Kevin O'Leary recently told us right here on Half Post Live that nowadays his strategy is to invest in women because female CEOs are the ones, quote, sending him back all the cash. Well, Mr. Fo Mr. Wonderful himself is back today. Uh, thank you very much for being back today. Great to be here. It's great to have you, especially on this issue. And uh, he's joining us with some top earning female entrepreneurs to share the secrets behind their success. Uh, joining us now in our Google Hangout as well as Jen Crane, the owner of Bottle Breacher. Also with us is Sarah Magullis, the CEO of Honeyfun.com, and Tracy Noonan, Hi. the founder of Wicked Good Cupcakes. So welcome everyone. Good to see you all. It's a powerful team of women that make a lot of money. I like that. A lot of money. As you say, so you talk to me a little bit, Kevin. Why are so few men championing this cause and why are you one of the lone wolves out there? This, uh, you know, this realization for me came as a process of just going through a normal audit period. I've been on Shark Tank six years now and I've done many, many deals during that period. And at the end of 2014, PwC, who does my accounting, said to me, look, when a deal gets past six years, we start to look at it to write it off. If it hasn't returned any capital at all, let's go through the list of all of your deals you've done. Private equity, Shark Tank, you know, venture deals, all that stuff. And, and try and figure out which ones in, in year seven, in, 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 I mean in 2015, this year, we're going to just take to zero because you've not received any cash back, which is fair. That's what auditors do. Mm. And then we started to look at the ones that had done well. And they said, why don't we try and figure out what it is about those deals that are different from the ones that are writing to zero and figure out, why don't you do more of the ones that do well? And the only commonality, because they were different in multiple sectors, different businesses, was that they were run by women. So the ones that were returning capital were all run by women. That was the big aha moment for me saying, why is this? So why is this? I mean, why are women better? Let's ask them what they think, because they're actually doing the work. I love it. He's putting all, himself in the driver's seat all, already. All of, these women, all of these women return me capital. All of them. All the ones that we're talking to right now. These are just some of my deals, but these are particularly successful. So, Tracy, I mean, you're one of the women that makes Kevin smile because you're giving him and making him a lot of money as well. Uh, what do you think is the biggest barrier for more women like yourself to be recognized as a successful CEO, recognized as somebody who can actually bring bang for the buck for investors? Well, I think a lot of women are their own worst enemy, right? Um, I know for myself personally that I don't have a college degree and I don't have an MBA. And I think a lot of women who are in the same boat as me think that's a barrier to being a successful businesswoman. And it's interesting because I read an article recently that more than half of the women CEOs that are in Fortune 1000 companies don't have MBAs. I agree with Kevin. I think being a mom and running a successful household, um, having the qualities where you are good at nurturing are really key to running a good business because if you're nurturing, you can inspire and you can develop your employees. And if you have employees that that listen to you and like you and are inspired by you, they are better workers and I think you're more successful. Yeah, Tracy, talk to me about that. I mean, you know, when we're talking about issues of funding as well, I mean, you know, do you feel that you, uh, that other women like you, kind of face an uphill struggle at the moment when it comes to getting people to invest in them, getting people to give them the funding that they need to actually launch a successful business? Um, I do, because I still believe that women aren't taken 100% seriously. Look, back in the 1980s, women were putting on pantsuits and cutting their hair short because, because they wanted to mis demystify the fact that women were emotional and too emotional to be in business. And they wanted to, as Kevin said, you know, show that testosterone. For us and for me personally, and I can only speak for myself, I like that I work with my husband. I think that we have a really good uh, synergistic um partnership. And quite honestly, if I need to go talk to heavy hitters, I have him or Kevin um, to go with me and to help me. Because, you know, I, I feel like going going myself, I sometimes get that proverbial pat on the head and, oh, you bake cupcakes, you're a woman. I'm not really taken seriously. So I, I think there's something to be said uh, 
for how you partner yourself as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's great. Um, thank you for sharing some of that personal story because I think that it's only by sharing these stories as well, by sharing, hey, this is what I face when I walk into a room full of investors. I face people basically patronizing me. I mean, you know, if you see something yep. like that happening, Kevin, uh, what's your immediate response? I mean, you know, does it take other men to kind of school other men about, you know, that's, that's not smart. That's not the way to approach a woman who's coming to you with a good business idea. You know, I think at the end, though, with business, it's results that matter. So you talk about these social issues or whether a man or a woman is more emotional about their business. But quarter after quarter, so every three months in, in America, we test our businesses by looking at results. That's what happens. And over time, clearly these lesser volatile results and better performance are, are going to be, the benefit's going to accrue to who's ever running the business. So these women are, ver are very instrumental in running their businesses, even though they do it on a family basis. They're, they're all working with their husbands. But, you know, if I want to find out what's going on in terms of logistics at Bottle Breacher, I email Jen, because she's doing all that stuff. And, you know, her husband is sort of the, the visionary guy that was out there, you know, as, as a, as a, as a in, in service, which is an amazing story in itself, but she was keeping the farm running back at home with two daughters. Same thing with, with Tracy at, at, at and it's, it's the same. These women are sort of leading their businesses and they know what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can't argue that they don't have the ability to manage and execute. And that's what I think if you go back to the 80s, what Tracy was talking about, this perception that men run the show. Well, that's a load of crap. Uh, all right, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious as well. I mean, Tracy, in terms of sacrifice, what do you feel like you have sacrificed? And, uh, you know, how do you sort of deal with that idea and knowing that? Well, Kevin's exactly right. Um, the biggest sacrifice, obviously, is family time, family events. So many events we didn't get to over the past three years. Um, Danny and I, my daughter, when we started the business, we didn't pay ourselves nothing, zero, for a year and a half. And, you know, fortunately, my husband, Scott, was making a living at the time, and he could support us because it was a huge sacrifice. Um, but, you know, like also like Kevin said, I, I wouldn't – do it any other way because look look where we've come. Look at the opportunities we've had. We've been at the NASDAQ. We were on Shark Tank. We have a family business. You know, it's painful in the beginning. It truly is, but it's worth every bit of sweat equity that you put into I'll it. I'll give you an example that's interesting. So Tracy and Scott were going to take a vacation, a well-deserved one for a few days. They'd already booked their travel. ABC 2020 called me and said we'd like to feature them in a test mm -hmm. of sales acumen in Union Square in, uh, in New York. We're gonna shoot a whole thing around Wicked Good Cupcakes, it's gonna take three days. I called her up and said, listen, this is right during your holiday, what do you wanna do? Out goes the holiday, forget that, and they work their tails off for ABC. Of course, that's gonna be huge when it airs because it's gonna be 14 minutes of primetime television for Wicked. But that's a sacrifice. Forget the holiday, that's out the window. Instead, they're working all night in New York. Mm. Yeah. Now, you know, if you had that choice, what would you do? I'm glad she chose what she did, but you still gave up her holiday. It's interesting as well, isn't it? Because President Obama uh, at the White House today just hosted a, a group of entrepreneurs, and he was talking about how uh, women are going to be a real focal point when it comes to investing in business and investing in female and business as well. Uh, how do you see that, Kevin? I mean, you know, obviously you've got some fantastic women here right now. What you're doing on Shark Tank and focusing on women is one thing. How do you see yourself enriching the next generation of female entrepreneurs? I've always felt that if you're a successful entrepreneur, you owe the upcoming generation a lot of your time. I do it through teaching now in undergrad and graduate cohorts in business and in engineering and talk to them about my failures, not my successes, because I'm trying to steer them away from making mistakes. And when I now go to schools like uh, MIT or um, Notre Dame, where I recently taught, I've noticed something remarkable. If you look at the MBA class or the business class, it's about 50-50, men and women. It, that's never been the case. It's almost half and half. And the one that really is knocking me out is engineering. If you look at engineering cohorts at MIT, which there's a global competition trying to get into MIT. Everybody on earth that's an engineer wants to be at MIT. And those classes are almost 40% women now. About, about a third of them will be entrepreneurs when they graduate. So I think in the next decade, there's going to be a real shift in terms of startups, mid-cap and large-cap public companies that are going to have women, not just because it, it's the right thing to do from a, you know, societal reason. I think it's going to be the right thing to do for performance, for actual return on investment, which is, 
in the long run, all that matters in business, if you think about it, as evidenced by the fact, you know, we're looking at small cap businesses here, but there's lots of evidence in larger cap companies where women managers are just kicking it out of the park because they have passion for their employees, they understand the challenges of time management, and I think, and we're going to find this out, they set achievable goals. They set goals they can achieve. So they bring down expectations when necessary, but at least they deliver on the ones they promised, which in business, stability is everything. Absolutely. Well, uh, guys, I want to thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, Jen, Tracy, and Sarah, thank you guys for joining us via Google Hangout. Kevin, as always, thank you very much thank you. for joining us here on set in uh, HuffPost Live. And guys, thank you very much out there on Periscope and, of course, the HuffPost Live community for your fantastic questions. Uh, more information on all our guests, their companies, and, of course, ABC's Shark Tank is in our resource well below. So click on those links and stay with us. The conversation continues up next on HuffPost Live.